Lord, will you empower us today so we will go out and impact our community? I want to say today that God wants to empower you to impact. Just don't want doodads, just don't want to feel good, just don't want a nice little touch, just don't want a, a nice, nice little feeling or whatever it might be. We want to be empowered so we can go out and impact. Anybody want that? Well, come on, why don't you raise your hands right now? We just ask God to do that. You, why don't you ask, Lord, you, will you empower me so I can go out and impact this, com this community that I live in? Lord, let us serve our generation in our time, and Lord will give you all the praise and all the glory. And everybody said... Amen. Last week, uh, I spoke about laying hold of opportunities. And I want to ask you a question today. What do you see? Do you see crisis or do you see opportunity? How do you see things? King Saul and all the men of Israel ran from the opportunity because they saw the size of the giant. And in their mind and in their imagination, the, the whole scenario was so out of their league and so big, too big for them that they forgot even to inquire of God. But all they could see was the size of the enemy. Opportunity of a lifetime has to be, has to be seized. It's something that we've got to grab hold of. David seized the opportunity. When he was there and he heard the Goliath crying out and screaming and threatening and everything else that was going on, but he seized the opportunity came on the scene with bread and cheese and a, some figs, but he went home carrying the giant's head, riches, no taxes, and the king's daughter. See, opportunity of a lifetime must be seized in the lifetime of the opportunity. I really want us to get this into our thinking. David's brothers and people around you will always try to bring you down to their level. If you've got an expectancy and if you've got an excitement and if you've got an enthusiasm and, and you something about what God is saying to you and you're, you just want God, people will, around you will try to pull you down to their level. And what David's brothers wanted them, wanted David, was to see what they could see. And what they could see was a giant too big to win, too big to conquer. We've all heard this before, that David saw a giant too big to miss. In our lifetime, and there are people there as God raises you up, as God touches your life, there's always ones around that will try to put you down or call you a fanatic. I believe that a fanatic is somebody that loves God more than you do. I want to inspire you today to greatness. I, I, want, to, I want to inspire you today to go beyond. I, I want to inspire you today to believe even more than you've ever believed before. I want to inspire you to go, today to go deeper into the things of God than we've ever dared to go. I want to inspire you today to believe more than you've ever, ever thought possible. Because, friend, if we don't start to rise up, and if things don't start to change in the atmosphere over the church, the church is heading towards failure and defeat. It's heading into a... A, 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 like a dark ages. But I believe that God is going to raise up a people. Do you believe that today? I believe that this is our time to believe the unbelievable and receive the impossible. I believe it's a time to believe and to receive. And that might take some shifts in our thinking. Everything God ever, ever asked us to do or believe is unbelievable. In fact, from Genesis to Revelation, all God's teachings, 
all of His promises, all of the revelation knowledge, and even Jesus' birth, death, and resurrection all go beyond our natural thinking, our natural believing. But I've got a, I've got a little word today, but God. <laughs> but with God, all things are possible. And today, if we can somehow or other shift in, in the way we think and go beyond our natural thinking, because it's all possible to those who believe. And it's an interesting thing, and that's why God calls it faith. Have faith in God. The Bible says, the just shall live by faith. How many people believe that God is going to do something in our hearts that will change the way we think? We don't serve a religion. We don't serve a denomination. We serve a risen Savior. We serve Christ, amen? We're not controlled by doctrines and philosophies of man. We want to be led by the Spirit. We're not bound by natural, ordinary thinking. If you have an ear to hear what God is saying, you and I are being changed and continually learning from an extraordinary God. I believe that God is touching people again. He is bigger than we could ever, ever imagine. God is more powerful than you could ever, ever think. We've got to have our minds, I don't know how to put it, but we've got to have, a, have an invasion of God's Spirit into our thinking. Because that, the way you think, that's who you are. But if you can start to think that our God is bigger than I could ever, ever imagine, His Word is more powerful than we may ever be able to grasp. While we're on this planet, perhaps, the greatest church and the greatest move of the Spirit may not really fully contain and grasp exactly what God can do. Because when we get to the end, I believe that God is a God who can do exceedingly abundantly above all that we've ever been through or ever done. The greatest miracle you've ever experienced or the greatest miracle that you've ever, ever heard, of, heard about, God wants to do exceedingly abundantly above that. Amen. Our God is well able. He's a miracle working God. He's a wonder. He's a miracle. He's a miracle working God. Amen. We used to sing songs, somebody's here and I know it is Jesus. Somebody's here and I know it is the Lord. But you see, today, modern church can go through a whole service and not ever even experience the presence of God. Because our faith is in our own ability. Our faith, faith is that perhaps today we don't even need God. We can do it ourselves. Well, friend, I want to tell you I've got news we can't. Because without God, we can't do anything. There is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof is death. Lest the Lord build the house, they that build it labor in vain. It has to be a move of the Spirit that will touch young people, that will touch older people, that will touch people. It will cause us to rise above and be counted. God is bigger than we could ever, ever imagine. I want to challenge us today. I want to inspire us today to, to go further and deeper to believe even more. Start to confess and start to speak what you feel and what you believe God is saying to you. I believe it is a time for that. His Word. The Word of God is powerful. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. Amen. The Word of God today is working mightily in us. And I do not believe for one moment that God is silent. I do not believe that he's gone to sleep. 
I believe that He's always talking and He's always speaking and He's always challenging and He's always stirring and He's always raising people up. But the trouble is when God comes in His own power and His own authority, that when, when God touches us, sometimes we don't understand. And in our thinking, we think it's impossible. Gideon, as I spoke last week, was a man like that. He was there in the threshing floor uh, getting a little bit of flour so he could make a bit of bread for his family. But the Spirit of God comes in and the Spirit of God starts to speak to him. Gideon, thou mighty man of Allah, God is with you. And he laughed at the angel. He laughed at the presence of God. And friend, I want to tell you today, we've laughed too often at what God wants to do and walked away from it, failures and defeated people. It's not a time to walk away. It's a time to stand again. It's a time to raise our hands again in praise and worship. It's a time again to say, come on, Lord, pour out your spirit upon our lives to make room for God and let God be God. And Gideon, as he, as he was there and as he was talking with the angel, obviously God started to speak to him. God started to move. And there's one thing there that amazed me. As Gideon raised up an army of 32,000 people, they were going to go out against an army of over 120,000. May have even been more. And then God says, no. He said, I understand something about man. Your army is too big. Because if you defeat them with this army, you will think you did it yourself. And friend, we've got to get ourselves out of this equation. And then we've got to get a hold of God, and then we've got to put ourselves back into the equation. <laughs> because God wants to use you, and He wants to use me. But if I keep Him out of the equation, it won't happen. But if I get in on His side and get under the spout where the glory comes out, then God can use us in a mighty way. We find that this army of 32, can you imagine, the first thing he said to him is said, tell the people that are there, all this army, if they're fearful, go home. Can you imagine 20,000 people went home? Left him with 10,000 people. And God said, there's still too many. We know that it whittled it down to 300 people. Because you see, God is well able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that you and I could ever imagine or think. God can save with many or with few. All he needs is people that will trust and obey, for there's no other way. I'm talking to you this morning because I, I want to inspire you to go deeper and further into the things of God. I want to inspire you today to believe for the impossible. I want to inspire you today to rise up and be counted be part of this great army of God. Because God, I believe, is moving and touching people. He is bigger than you could ever imagine. His word is more powerful than we may ever be able to grasp. He's an impossible working God. I, th I believe that this is a time for us all to break through into God's power. God's great power. Numbers 23, verse 19, it says this, God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Has he said, and shall he, shall he not do it? Or has he spoken, and shall he not make it good? If the word of God says you can have it, it's yours. If God says it's done, it's done. If God says, by my stripes you are healed, it's done. It's our believing. It's our understanding. And perhaps in our thinking, our God is not who He really is. Our God is not the God that can do all these things. And until we build that up in our thinking and understand that God is awesome, He's all-sufficient, He's everything, He's a miracle-working God, then things will start to change. Things will start to change around our, our lives. The Word says you can have it, it's yours. God's Word says you can be healed, that's what it means. It also says this, 
It says that you can love and forgive your enemies. And I believe that that's something that many of us have got to start to do is learn how to forgive. Because we carry stuff around in our lives that stop God from getting in. Jesus, in, in Mark 10, verse 27, Jesus said, With men it is impossible, but not with God. For with God all things are possible. Would you turn to somebody today and say, All things are possible. Friend, I want to say I believe that there's a fresh, fresh, if I can put it like this, perhaps it's not so much, yeah, there's a fresh anointing on prayer. Prayer in many aspects has become a religious manifestation of words with no life. I don't know if that made sense because I was only thinking of it as I was saying. It. It's not making much sense to me. But I believe that prayer has got to have a spirit of life on it. We're, we're, we're not talking to, to something like this. But we're talking to, in our mind and our imagination, the all-sufficient, almighty God, who nothing is impossible. Where, where there's no force or power on earth that's greater than He. And He is a rewarder. We must believe that God is and that He is a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. And when we pray, we're not praying just because it's some religious thing that we do in church. But when we pray, we're going to communicate with, with, with God. Australians have got this thing, and, as, and I'm going to liken it to this. If I shake hands with somebody and say, how you going? Good on you. I really don't want to know how he's going. <laughs> you know what I mean. Because it's, it's just something that's said. Our Father who art in heaven, hello. It's just something that is said. Has it got any meaning in it? Has it got any reality in it? Has it got any, any oomph in it? Has it got any love in it? Has it got any thing in it? Or are just words? I would rather somebody just get on their heart, on their knees or something, reach out to God. See, I just got all religious getting on my knees. <laughs> Washing the dishes and just looking up to God and say, I love you, Lord. Then going through some of the rigmarole and the religiosity that people go through and I know God says somewhere, I can't remember, I'm going to find it. God says, your prayers weary me. But somebody with some reality, Jesus, I love you. Or even, help. They're just reaching out to somebody that you know hears you. And I know that God is. God is God. <laughs> God is God. <laughs> God is God. <laughs> God is God. Amen. He's all powerful, He's all sufficient, He's everything. He made the worlds out of nothing. I got to blow my mind. I, I look up into the heavens and I say, where does that end? There is no end. Oh, glory. How can there be no end? But it's, you know why there's no end? Because he said there's no end. 
You can go out to space. People are looking when they get out there. When, when the Russians come back and they said, did you see God out there? Prayer. Prayer. And God will cause us to fall on our face. He will fall us, cause us to humble ourselves and kneel before Him. Not in some religious thing, but in some in adoration, in awesomeness of His majesty. I believe that God's been preparing the church, you, for what is about to happen. Do you believe that today? Or you're just going to be a bystander? I believe God is preparing us to take our place on planet Earth. I believe that God is wanting to restore all things. He opens the seals, revealing the mysteries, restoring the truth. Friend, if ever there's a day we need truth restored in the churches today. The truth. Raising up men and women from every generation, from every tribe. In the old days, Joe spoke about it the other week, about all the restoration that took place through the, the great patriarchs and the different ones that, as God gave them revelation, the Finneys, the Wesleys, the John G. Lakes, the Coolmans, the Wigglesworths, the Boswells. But I want to tell you, there was a man that came to Australia and he brought truth with him. His name was Trevor Chandler. And Trevor brought something back into the church that, that had been missing for so long. It was called joy. It was called dancing. Spirit of joy came on people. People danced in the presence of God. People got carried away in the anointing and the power of God. Pray for people and the anointing would hit them. They'd hit the deck. Having a, an encounter with God. Friend, I want to tell you, when we come to church, we should have an encounter with God. As a matter of fact, I think I'm having one now. <laughs> but you know what? The religious leaders of the, of the town all rose up against him. Religious leaders in Australia. And Rodney Howard Brown came with joy again. The religious people rose up against him. He was talking about a wonderful river. He was talking about the river of God. And I heard religious people say it's nothing but a swamp. People who didn't understand, people who, who had their own thinking. And you might have your thinking this morning, but I want to tell you, friend, I don't care what our thinking is and I don't care what my thinking is. I want God to invade my mind and take away everything that's not of Him that I can think like God wants me to think. And for some people, you know, it's not a pride, pride thing, but we've got to start thinking big. Start thinking big. We know... The generations come and generations go. And all these guys, they picked up a mantle. They picked up a baton. They began to run with it. And they began to go out there and share it. And thousands upon thousands of people all got involved. And all of a sudden it sort of died. It was like as if the baton dropped again. Baton dropped to the ground. But then all of a sudden another one would come through and they'd swoop up that baton, they'd run with that baton. Because I want to tell you that that one baton, that baton was sent by God for the nation of this world. And I want to tell you, friends, people are going to pick up the baton. And I believe it's time for you and I to pick up the baton again. And that baton will be captured by men and women until Jesus comes back, until we cross that finish line. 
And I don't know whether Jesus is coming back in my lifetime, to be totally honest with you. I don't care. All I know is that my life is secure. I believe right now the window of opportunity is open because the wind is blowing again. Just like the day of Pentecost. You see, if God can get it to you, if God can open our minds, if God can open us up to see into the realm of the Spirit, like Gehazi as he saw around about the man of God, horses and chariots of fire. And all of a sudden, his small-mindedness of failure and defeat, all of a sudden, his small-mindedness was, was split. Instead of saying, we're finished, now he was saying, there's more for us than be again us. That's what I'm talking about today. That's what I'm wanting to inspire you to do today. To say, God, will you invade my thinking? Will you invade my small-mindedness that I can? And God says, you can have the mind of Christ. How many people want the mind of Christ? God can get it to us. He will get it through us. When you get it into you and you, get, and you start working with it, I want, to, I want to encourage you and your family to stretch beyond the boundaries of natural everyday thinking. Too often when we hear of a situation, we say, well, that's it, it's finished. Well, that is a Gehaz, I thought. But if you want a resurrected thought, start saying, nothing is too difficult for my God and dare to believe Jesus. Amen. I believe that Australia will turn to Christ. I want to encourage you and your family to stretch beyond the, the natural boundaries, the boundaries of natural everyday thinking and break free from religious mindsets. And become more God inside minded. If God be for me, who can stand against me? Be God minded more than ever before. Believe the unbelievable and receive the impossible. Last Tuesday night at our prayer meeting, Ken had a word. And that word has resonated through my mind and it's been going through me like the sound I don't understand. But friend, if we don't rise up and start to listen to what the Spirit of God is saying through the prophetic word today and just listen to it and think, oh yes, and push it aside and put it over there for another day or another time, we'll fail. But the word came very strong and it says, speak to the unbelief. Speak to the negativity. Speak to poverty. Speak to sickness and pain. Rise up. The church has accepted sickness. It's accepted so much stuff that God says that we do not have to tolerate. I'm very quiet in this Presbyterian church. <laughs> We stand up in the name of the Lord of hosts. Young David came against that Goliath and he said, you might come to me with a javelin and with a spear and with this and with that, but I want to tell you, you might be just looking at me as some old fella or some ruddy young boy, 
But I want to tell you, that's got nothing to do with how young or how old or how miserable or how anything. It, it's what I believe. And I come against you in the name of the Lord of hosts. And friend, until we begin to rise up, until we start to speak to those situations, and you start saying to sickness and poverty and negativity and failure and defeat, and goodness knows what else, I come against you in the name of the Lord of hosts, and I command you. And tell the thing like David did, you're coming down. I've got another five minutes. Think about this. God has been working in and on your life from the, from the time you first set foot on this earth. I was asking God this morning as I sat, sat in my office and I wrote this down. That's why I'm reading it like I am. Think about this. God has been working in and on your life from the time you first set foot on this earth, even before you got saved. And he was working on your life for such a time as this. You were made in God's image and likeness. And nothing is impossible or too difficult for God. So don't let fear or unbelief or whatever conceive is in your mind that you can't. I want to tell you this, you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. So many people spend most of their lives trying to become what they already are. God made you more than a conqueror. Accept it. Trust God. Don't let Satan rob you of being part of this great end time revival. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not to your own understanding, but in everything acknowledge Him, and He will direct your path. Here endeth the lesson. I put this in front of my Bible. Lord, will you empower us today so that we will go out and impact our community. I have a photograph of the day we opened up one by COC. Thirty deacons, <laughs> two tables of communion wine. Think big. I keep this before me. <laughs> I keep it before me. It's there. Keep it before me. What have you got before you? Lord, will you empower us today so we will go out and impact our community? Empowered to impact. Amen. I've written down two pages of stuff that's going to give David a nightmare. <laughs> and I opened up the page with, what? can we do? <laughs> I'll share it with you later. <laughs> but you don't read this before you go to bed. <laughs> what can we do? I, I pray today that that somehow or other the Holy Ghost can inspire you. I believe that there are people here that are on the edge of walking into and moving into something so dynamic. 
And you sense it in your spirit. Just bow your heads with me for a moment. You sense. You, how do I put this? There, there's, there's something that's beginning to stir. Something that's beginning to stir. Friend, don't let that opportunity just fade away as a vapor. Don't let it just slip away. Seize it. Grab hold of it. Do something that will start to activate it. We in this church love to pray with people. Because the Bible says one shall put to flight 1,000, two shall put to flight 10,000. But I also believe in the prayer of agreement. And not just to put devils to flight, but also to, to, to accelerate something that's in your life, something that God wants to, to burst forth. I, oh, dear Jesus. I, I see people like buds that God just wants to burst you open and that your fragrance would be smelt and your, and your beauty would be seen. And, and oh, my God. If you're one of those, and you're going to say, God, would you, would you act of faith, motivate, help me. I want to seize this opportunity right now. I don't want to walk out of this place just, just saying it'll happen some other time. No, I want to seize it right now, right at this moment, right now while you're talking to me. And if that's you today as we all stand to our feet, I want you just to quickly come out the front here. And we're just going to pray. We're going to believe God with you today. You're going to believe for the anointing to touch your life. It's the anointing. 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 I was watching the football there the other day, and there was Collingwood Wood player was there, uh, uh, spectator was there, and and I think one of the the um, the other guys, I can't remember their name. Who was it? Collingwood and. Who? Eagles. And, and this lady, she bowed her head and she started to pray. I thought, my God, I wish I could get people praying like that in church. <laughs> Am I the only one that wants it? Are the only one. Don't just slip out of your seat. Don't be shy. Don't be. Don't. I want to be part of this. What God, you're doing in this time. Slip out of your seat. Oops. Let's pray. I want to believe God. You don't have to have the emotions of the song to get you out. Just let the Spirit of God bring you out. Let the anointing of God bring you out. Let the presence of God bring you forth. Friend, too long we've just sat around playing tiddlywinks in church. It's a time to declare war. 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 Time to declare war. War. Good. What are you going to sing? You know what I'd like you to sing? <laughs> I'm no longer a slave to fear. I'm no longer, they was looking for it, he knows, they know. Friend, don't be a slave to fear. Don't be a slave to things. Let the Spirit of God get around your life. How many people are not game to let the Spirit of God get around your life? He might mess up your life. He might take you in a different direction. Well, let the presence of God get around. If you like prayer, just come. I believe with you today. Hallelujah.